This is America's first family business. They're there. So thank you guys so much for having us today. Um, we're going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you first about some of the trends in pans for craft beer. Uh, what it means, why you might want to use a mobile canning company, and then Lindsay's going to talk about some more of the details about our operations, how we do it, and who some of our customers are, and, and why we like working with them. So, um, we're the Can Fam, as Terry said. We started in 2011 in San Francisco. Um, we're the co-founders, along with a couple other friends that we went to graduate school with. Um, we are, we were the first to start. And since we started, there have been a lot more mobile canning companies popping up all over the country. There's probably one near your city, wherever that may be. Um, but, and that's been really growing in step with the growth in interest in craft cans and the growth in breweries in general. Uh, since the first craft can was released in 2002, Dale's Pale Ale by Oscar Blues, <laughs> um, it's grown from one craft can uh, from one brewery to 340 breweries today, uh, canning over 1,200 different beers. Wow. Um, and so that's uh, almost 10% of the total breweries are canning at least one of their beers. This is actually already out of date, even though it's from earlier this year. And the breweries who are canning their beers vary from small regional breweries who choose to release um, cans as their only packaging and maybe only have reasonable uh, regional distribution. These are some examples like Crow Peak uh, in South Dakota, Morgan Street in St. Louis, Sun King in Indiana, Uncommon Brewers in California where we are, uh, all the way up to some of the largest and most prominent craft beers. You probably have seen New Belgium, um, Sierra Nevada out where we are, and of course the big news this year was Sam Adams deciding to go ahead and introduce the can uh, to their lineup. So the reasons that customers of ours and any craft brewery is looking to um, choose a package to go with cans are, so there are a few reasons. The first that we hear from a lot of people is that cans are opaque and so they protect the beer from penetration by light and oxygen. So especially for fresher, hoppier beers, um, sometimes that can really be a benefit because you preserve those aromas and it's almost like a serving vessel that's more similar to a keg um, at the retail than, um, than a bottle would be. In fact, one of our first customers named their cans the, the palm keg as a way to sort of, you know. <laughs> um, and so cans also allow craft breweries to reach new markets. So there are a lot of people who enjoy drinking craft beer, who also enjoy doing things um, outdoors and don't want to have to make that trade-off by saying, you know, I really like drinking my favorite local craft beer, but today I'm going to go golfing or I'm going to go for a bike ride, so maybe I'll just take a macro brew instead. Um, and so local breweries in this way are able to reach those markets and it allows them to, you know, just expand their, their sales in that way. And then in addition to these considerations, there are also some environmental advantages of cans. They have a high recycled content, and they're also the most recycled package among all beverage containers in the U.S. In California, where we are, cans basically have a 100% recycling rate, which is fantastic. They're also substantially lighter than glass. Um, and so while this might not make a difference if you're just putting a couple of cases in the back of your Prius and driving them over to the market, as one of our customers does, <laughs> if you're shipping a container from coast to coast or exporting internationally, you can save as much as 60% on your shipping costs because you're losing that weight of the glass and you can just fit a lot more beer into the single container. Uh, among the breweries that can their beer, most of them do have their own canning lines, but over 10% are using a mobile canning service, such as ours. Um, and there are a lot of reasons why breweries should choose to go this route. You know, one of the first and most obvious is space. Especially in Northern California, there's a really big crunch on space. Rent is very expensive, and we can just slide in to the brew house or take over the tap room and get a brewery canning without them having to worry about expanding into another facility, taking up space with that packaging line. And of course, there's also the financial investment of buying a packaging line. So we, um, you know, with a mobile canning, you can help customers, you know, <laughs> breweries can save the money for investing in the brewery system, investing in making beer, instead of having to worry about packaging. 
So we also really focus on the, you know, we have the expertise and we focus on the maintenance of the equipment. Um, so the brewery doesn't have to hire additional staff, train them on this specific piece of equipment. Um, so it's another savings in that way. We also handle all of the logistics of sourcing the materials, storing them, bringing them to the brewery. So they just show up, it's a relatively smooth process. You know, we get the cans, get the labels, bring in the equipment, and set everything up right there on site. Uh, we also help customers avoid the large minimums that are set by the can manufacturing companies. If you want to buy printed cans, like most of those that you see, you're looking at a minimum of 100 to 200,000 per design of the can that you want to get. But we purchased these um, blank silver cans. Can you guys see over here? I just realized I'm like, I'm just standing in front of it. And um, with the blank silver cans, we put custom labels on them. So there's essentially no minimum. You know, we do runs as small as 100 cases, which is about for 12 ounce cans, seven and a half barrels, 10 barrels, or 16 ounce cans. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and if you want to see an example of what those labels look like, Santa Cruz Mountain, one of our customers, um, is at the GABF Hall and has some examples of our cans at their space. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay. We'll tell you more. Thank you. So I'm going to go over operations a little bit. We start at our warehouse where we load our canning line and all of our equipment into our trailer. We can bring enough cans for about 200 cases and for any larger jobs we have some cans drop shipped to our customers. We load all of our equipment out of the trailer into the brewery so that we can get as close to the right tanks or finishing tanks as possible. This keeps the beer cold and it disrupts the beer less um, by not having it run really long hose lengths. We can set up in virtually any size or shape brewery. We've been to some really tiny spaces before. So, this is working, yes. Um, the cans start, they're, they're sanitized, and they start with a CO2 purge to displace the oxygen in the can. They're then go into the filler, and they're filled from the bottom up under that layer of CO2. They get a lid dropped onto them. And then this little bit of time here is important because it gives time for the beer to foam out the top a little bit, as you can see, and push out under the lid to push out any oxygen that's in the headspace to try and minimize that as much as possible. The cans are then seamed, so we have a four head filler and a single seamer. They're then dropped into a bucket which rinses them, and then it also ensures proper fill, because you can tell them where they're floating in the bucket to make sure that you have the right amount of beer in there. And unless we're using pre-printed cans, they then go through a labeling machine. Um, and so you can see this is a customer that we did last week, uh, Central Coast Brewery down in San Luis Obispo, Central California. So we can do speeds of up to about 45 cases an hour when we're labeling. We can do double that when we're doing pre-printed cans. An average day for our average customer is about 15 to 20 barrels in a day, but we can do up to 30 to 35 barrels for larger customers. Um, our customers span a wide range of brewery types with different needs on, and different reasons on why they choose mobile canning. So this is an example of a brew pub, Seabright Brewery in Santa Cruz, California. Um, they are extremely short on space being a brew pub. Um, they're also located near a beach. So they sell all of their cans right over their counter for the most part, and their customers come in, they have a pint, and then they grab a six-pack to go and take them to the beach with them. I, think it's, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> An example of a production brewery uh, is Devil's Canyon, which is one of our first customers. They're really big on sustainability, so like the benefits that cans offer in that way. They also, since they have so much going on in their brewery, would really just prefer not to deal with the headache that goes along with owning and operating and maintaining their own packaging line. They also have a wide range of different types of beers that they make including some such as their whole bore scotch ale, which they like to age, and they like how cans provide a really stable environment for the beer to age properly in. 
Um, special edition beers are also put in cans. Um, this is one that the, you can find at um, the GABF Hall. Um, Santa Cruz Mountain Brewing, in collaboration with the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, put this out over the summer um, as an example. Of, is Boardwalk an example of another place where there's a large beer sales throughput, but glass is not allowed for beach and safety reasons. So, um, also, gypsy brewers, some of you may have heard that term, um, brew labels who don't have their own established brewery are kind of brewing at excess space at other breweries around their city. So, mobile canning is great for them because we can follow them to wherever our customers are brewing, and it doesn't have to be in one place, and when they're working with a brewery to find a good location to brew, they don't have to worry about what packaging facilities they already have. We can just show up whenever the beer is ready. It's an, another example of a gypsy brewer. Nano brewers um, are some of our hardest working tiny upstart customers. Um, they often have maybe just one or two different beer brands. They're working on building up their market. So we can do really small runs of their single style beer and that enables them to get their beer out in front of the public and distribute it on whatever scale they can while they're working on building their market, which is something that under traditional packaging methods they just wouldn't have the volumes to be able to achieve. Larger customers, <laughs> such as this, um, often choose mobile canning because it can give them an opportunity to experiment with the market before they make a huge investment in what would be a really large piece of packaging equipment. Um, and while we are a small operation, for these kind of customers, we often go and set up one morning and just leave it set up and run for however many days it takes to get through, for example, this many cans that we did in about 10 days straight of running. And then uh, we can get out of the way and they have all of the inventory they need to be able to test the market and they can do that for you know either a couple months or a year until they really decide what they want to do. Um, we've also done some canning for cocktails, water, specialty juices. Um, this was done by Campari International for their Manhattan Cocktail Classic last summer. Um, when we founded this company, we made our little motto for stronger communities, less waste, and better beer. And um, I mean, it, the brewing community is really why we love this job so much, uh, as is exemplified here. Everybody that's in the beer industry loves what they're doing, and it's just a really great group of people to work with. Um, manual labor can get really tiring sometimes, but I think it sure beats working at a computer all day. <laughs> Um, we really love that we can help all these small local businesses, which are pillars of communities and job growth and um, everything like that. And we just really are feel honored that we can be participating in this craft community. So thank you guys for your time. Uh, we can take questions and enjoy GABF. Thank you.